the genuine article. Discussion and commentary based on articles from Jack. Hello, I'm Tony DeMaria, the editor of Jack, here with Inside Jack. And recently the Cylon T trial was reported, and we're pleased to have that paper in press. And that looked at the value of triple antiplatelet therapy, the third antiplatelet agent being cylostazole, and whether or not that was effective in preventing adverse outcomes long-term after intervention. And here to discuss that with us in an interesting twist, twist is the editorialist and one of the reviewers of that manuscript, Dr. David Antoniucci. And uh, David is professor of medicine at the University of Florence. And tell us, David, uh, can you review the, the specifics of that paper for us? Yes. And uh, this is a, a very interesting study also because it's a negative study and shows that uh, triple antiplatelet therapy on a cohort of 800 patients was not effective in the improvement of the outcome of patients who received drug eluting stents. And this is despite the fact that, uh, however, psilostazole uh, has some effect on in vitro tests showing that uh, patients with triple antiplatelet therapy have a more platelet aggregation inhibition. And in fact, uh, there have been two other trials that have shown that psilostazole was of value in... Some value was shown in the previous two trials, yes. Yes, but uh, I, I am confident that this is the truth in this third trial, because in order to decrease effectively the risk of thrombosis and uh, clinical events related to death thrombosis, you have to achieve uh, a very good, uh, profound inhibition, also in vitro test. And uh, silosalods have a little value in adding the uh, effect on platelet aggregation inhibition. Thus, I think that there is no role for triple antiplatelet therapy today. So, you think that the issue was triple antiplatelet therapy or the issue was silostazole specifically? Silasterol, both, both things, because uh, you have to start with the idea that uh, at least 20-25% uh, of patients receiving dual antiplatelet therapy are no responder or poor responder to clopidogrel. Thus, if you use a third drug that have a uh, small effect, uh, however a significant effect, but a small effect on platelet uh, uh, reactivity, uh, this will not result uh, in a significant impact on clinical outcome. This is my idea. So, uh, do you think that in the future, we, in these patients, we will move toward other agents like prosegrel or ticagrelor, or do you think we will increase the dose of clopidogrel? Uh, uh, as shown by the Gravitas trial, if you increase the dose of clopidogrel, you have uh, really a very uh, small response. And this is also my experience. Uh, I published with you the Reclose trial several years ago. This is a field of investigation showing that uh, maybe that uh, poor responders to clopidogrel are generally at the risk of thrombosis. Obviously, if you have a patient with seven drug eluting stent, uh, it's very likely that the thrombosis will occur just in the stent. But uh, I think more important that uh, this patient, this is really a strong marker of thrombotic events, not necessarily into the stent, but also in other part, uh, in other district of uh, atherosclerotic disease. This is a very important issue. And uh, we don't know if uh, with the use of prasugrel or Ticagrelo, we have all responders, but we don't know if this uh, risk marker may be changed by these uh, uh, new drugs. Are you uh, at the moment, one of the issues we had with this study was that they gave the Silostazole to everyone and uh, maybe a better strategy is to identify those patients who are poor responders to aspirin and clopidogrel and to selectively treat those patients. What is your 
yeah, then he said there is a rationale for this, because if the patient is a responder to clopidogrel, in this patient you will achieve the same result uh, that uh, you can achieve with prasugrel. It's a good responder, you have uh, an ADP test of 50 or 40 percent. Uh, this patient is the same risk profile uh, as treated with prasugrel. So, uh, last question. Uh, at the current time, are you measuring routinely any facet of, of platelet reactivity in your patient? I think that uh, this should be very useful. Are you doing it? Yes. We are doing from the last five years, and uh, we have a big lab in our in our hospital. Uh, all tests, but uh, our standard is light transmittance Light transmission. Very interesting. Well, this is a hot field, and a lot of debate still going on. And thanks for sharing your extensive experience with us. I'm Tony Demaria. Thanks very much for viewing.